hey hey everybody um so glad to be back i got some good dinner lunch breakfast whatever food for y'all today to feed y'all spirits today that is the goal the goal to get fat in the spirit to be strong in the spirit you know it's not always about the physical because there's a whole lot going on that's spiritual and it's our duty to seek the face of god spend time with god and to grow in the spirit um because as we grow in the spirit we are better for the kingdom of god because we are able to pray and bring heaven on earth so you guys let's get into prayer and then we'll get into this delicious meal Dear Heavenly Father, you know the reason we come before you. Father, you know this computer been tripping and would not be saving anything. Just wouldn't be saving anything. So, God, I just pray that this saves. And I pray that, um, that your people get the message. That your message comes with clarity, truth, and revelation. I pray, Father God, that the Spirit of the Living God is here, Father, because where you are, there is liberty, there is freedom, Father. So we just ask that you be in this place with us, that you lead and guide your words, Father, and that you just let the seed be planted and the other seeds that are already planted, let them grow, let this be water to the seeds so they may grow, continue to keep our hearts as good, solid soil and ground for your word to take root and to grow so beautifully and, and fiercely and strong, Father God. And um, we just pray that our ears are open to whatever you say and our hearts are open to whatever you have for us today, Father God. And I pray that we're able to digest it sit with it meditate on it and hold it dear father help us to hold on to what applies to us and let go of you know the things that might not apply to us because we're all in different stages in this journey um different rankings different levels spiritually so i pray that all who come all feel welcome all feel your love and your embrace father god and that they take what you're saying and they hold on to what you're saying and they don't let satan come and steal it so we seal it, seal this in the blood of jesus and uh this divine appointment that you have for all of us in this very moment um bring the ones here who you want to to get this word father god because it's all you none of me speak in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen i don't know y'all but when i be praying sometimes like my eyes just be going to be watery um but anyways so we you guys are gonna start in hebrews I gotta tell y'all something. Y'all know I'm big on my King James, and I'm still in there. I'm still a little dabbly, dabbly, in and out. But I switched maybe a couple months ago um, to the New American Standard Bible. And I did that because I'm taking classes now, and I'm learning a lot. And what I've learned was that this is the closest to the actual manuscript. So um, all the strong coordinates and all those things, they already kind of translate it. That's what I've been noticing so far. I actually bought a different Bible with all the coordinates in the back. So um, this actually just fits those strong coordinate words in there. So it just, it flows. You don't have to do a lot of digging. I myself am still doing my own research and stuff and still growing in Christ as well and in my knowledge. So just from what I've learned, I've been reading um, out of this Bible as well as my King James uh, version as well. You know, we gotta learn how to just let things go. But I still read it because God gave me a lot of words in that Bible. So it's a lot in that Bible. And... Um, to i like to see what was changed because as we know king james you know he changed a lot of those stuff in there and um 
him and the mother forty scholars to help him write it, uh, based on his life and like things with his wife and stuff. So he changed a lot of those things, and so it's good to have you know both for me because I like to read and learn and study and see where he might have changed something and what the real version says. And you know I also have um a new King James version as well. I got a other Bibles, um, but me i like to stick to the closest ones to the original uh, as possible because you know the old testament is hebrews and then the new testament is um greek so this new american standard bible it gets it all in there for us in english okay so we are gonna start anyways in um hebrews 10 and we're gonna read um three through 30 i mean not three 35 to 36 and just so you know we're going to be going through a bunch of different scriptures so i might be bouncing around a lot but i'll make sure in the description that i um that i write down all the bible verses that i'm speaking from as far as like where the lesson is and um and you guys can always go back and read, but I do advise you to grab your Bibles because we like to hold each other accountable and make sure nobody is teaching us false stuff and making sure what we read is actually in the Bible. You know, if you're ever somewhere and they're telling you you don't need a Bible or don't pull out your Bible and all that other stuff, that's a red flag, you know. Um, even in the days of Paul, when he was preaching, there was people around him, and I forget who they were specifically, but it was the women, it was other people. So while he was preaching, they were looking it up to see what he said, and he said that they were wise for that, you know, that um, they were smart for that. So always, you know, look at it, read it. Um, just to make sure, but also, you know, give the, the preacher, the teacher, whoever grace as well, because sometimes when you're familiar with things, you just it naturally say things, and sometimes you can throw your own uh, words in there as well, because you're so familiar with it, um, that you start to tweak it a little bit, so it's not always because people are trying to lead you astray, sometimes it's just simply, you know, they're just used to saying it so much, hearing it different ways, knowing different Bibles, um, speaking and pulling from different things, so we just want to make sure that all of it is in there, um, and that they're not changing anything, all right? Because we, we love the truth, we love the light, we love revelation. Okay, children of God, that's what we love. We don't want none of those false teachings, none of that other stuff. But if it ain't the truth, we don't want it, okay? And I also, as a sidebar, I just want to say, um, you know, as a light, um, as a light we are are different and everybody isn't going to understand that um the world isn't going to understand that the world doesn't want to understand it the world's going to want to trans um transform us into them but we will never be them you know children of god are separated and different handpicked and pulled by god and there's no way to blend so i just want to start this off by encouraging you to be the light in the world um to speak up for god speak up um for his truth and his revelation and you know don't be afraid to be bold when it comes to um preaching and teaching his truth because there's so many people out here who have no problem um you know furthering satan's kingdom with darkness but yet you know there's so many christians who are still afraid to speak and now we're in the times where it's time to be bold it's time to be real it's time to stand firm and stand strong and let the holy you know spirit in you do the talking and do the fighting you as a child of god it's your duty to read the bible to have intimacy with god and to grow in him so that when you are speaking to another person and you 
could be saving a soul you know what you're talking about and uh, it's it, and, and you know when you're in those processes as well like don't overthink it because it's by just telling it like like people don't understand just telling your testimony um makes such a huge difference i've been telling my testimony and i've been seeing in my testimony i mean everything just changed for me in january like a a whole full turn and uh, I've been telling people my testimony and it's changing so many people's lives and I wouldn't have, you know, just been thinking like, hey, let me go tell tell these folks, you know, what God done for me. But I have been this recent turnaround, you know, the transition from coming into the world into fully laying my life down for God. It's been... A beautiful thing for me I mean I've been uh, living my best life with peace with truth and revelation and um, with the love of God so you know start by that and read the Bible and get familiar with the words of what God says because it's God that is going to do the saving not you so be the light stand out you know because so many people want to be you know a um, generic brand and not many people want to be an original so be the light because the light sits on a hill you know um and it makes people want to come to it and it gives people hope you know if you're in a house and it's all pitch black like you're gonna want some light you're gonna be looking for some candles or something you know so understand that the light is a beautiful thing it's, it's a very beautiful thing and not everybody has it so hold on to it and don't be afraid to be who god designed you to be and notice i'm not saying be who you want to be i'm saying be who god designed for you to be and if you don't know then just go sit at his feet you know um there's no sin great enough to keep you from god it's only your your own conscience that keeps you from him you know jesus came and died on a cross for our sins you know 39 stripes on his back that wasn't for nothing that was so god could have closeness with you again with me again and with his children again so that's all i want to add um other than that you guys let's get the going so we're going to start with hebrews 10 35 and 36 and this says therefore do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward and I want you guys to hold on to which has a great reward, okay? And this is, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. And then Matthew seven twenty one it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter so you guys we are talking about salvation today um i know there's a lot of different beliefs in salvation and this is the revelation god gave to me on 10 22 2022 at 1 4 a.m and uh, I was just watching this video and then he was talking about or preaching about Hebrews just 10 35 and 36 but he was talking about um in it something completely different I, I don't even recall too much of what he was even saying uh what the moral of his thing was because as soon as I heard that and read it in my bible God started speaking a whole bunch of other stuff to me so I don't remember what that man was speaking on, but this is where God started to take me into salvation. How so many people think that um, just by saying, um, 
God, uh, you know, come into my heart and making my Lord and Savior, just like repenting for the first time and then just accepting Jesus. They think that's a... Um, you know, it's all one and done. Now I'm going to heaven no matter how I, I do my life, live my life, whatever I choose, whatever happens, I'm going to heaven. Like a lot of people even think that um, maybe, you know, people, they're related to their friends who've been living a life that does not glorify God. But because that person says, you know, Lord, Lord in a prayer lord 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 oh god made a way lord lord that they're getting into heaven and clearly we can see just because you know his name it doesn't mean anything even demons know his name and people just automatically think like that when somebody dies they're going to heaven and that's not true some people are going to hell and that's why awareness is so important because if we can figure this out now then we can we can change our lineage we can change the generations we can change the people around us you know we can change our own lives like instead of you know being mad at people for spe speaking the truth and coming with the truth of god be thankful that god loves you enough to give you the truth to save you you know what i'm saying because god created hell for Satan and his angels, the one third of the angels that left with him. Okay? And hell was never created for us. But because God was kind enough to give us free will instead of dragging us and forcing us to do what he's called us to do or created us to do, he gives us grace to figure out what we want to do. Do we want to serve him or do we not? Do we want to serve the devil because, you know, what he seems to offer seems cool? Go to Luke 4. I did a study on that if you like. But, you know, like, like what is it? You know, are we going to pick God? even though it cost us to lay down our lives or what are we gonna do because you you know like you can't live in the world and be the world and get to heaven like there's order to god you know like even just seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then everything is added unto it like there's always an order and a blueprint into things when god is is telling us what to do like god reveals mysteries and secrets to us and we can either be oblivious to them or we could sit down and ask god more questions we could read the bible more to get deeper into it we can sing and do worship time with god and have him talk to us you know what i mean we can dream dreams we, we god speaks to us i mean Clearly, that's what this the Bible is, right? The Holy Bible. Like, the Holy Spirit told them or inspired these people who wrote the Bible to write what they wrote. And none of that would have happened had none of them been willing, yielded vessels. And so, I say that to say, like, be people... Who can see God's love and correction and not always like oh this person thinks they know everything or want to rebuttal like I understand like if you have questions and you genuinely want to understand something but when you think you know something and somebody says something and it challenges that like don't be upset because you could possibly be learning new things like everybody's on different like levels in the spirit like there's different rankings like you know like an average person like a baby christian can't just come in to the kingdom of god and now start you know praying against principalities like that's not how that works you're gonna get a whole territory attacking you like a whole nation like you know like attacking you spiritually and then what you're gonna do you know, there's different levels to things and there's different levels in the spiritual realm. And so I'm just saying that to say, like, always be open. Like something that I try to do is, is I like to pray first. Like, 
God, give me ears to hear what you're saying and give me a heart to receive what you're saying because I don't want to be me. I'm not speaking about nobody else, but I don't want to be a person who thinks I know so much about God that if somebody is truly teaching me something new that could elevate me in the spiritual realm and give me spiritual understanding and and knowledge and and things like that like i'm going to sit because what's on the person's head the oil the anointing the mantle the knowledge whatever you know pours into whoever listens and so if you're sitting you know it's just like going like if to a ceo of a company right and you want to know how they built their business like and and it was a hard meeting for you to get up into, but you got into there, you're going to go in there with paper and pen, and you're not going to be arguing with them about what they know because you see the fruit of their lives, right? So you're going to sit down, and you're going to listen, and you're going to write, and you're going to ask questions, and you're going to write, but you're not going to say, no, that can't work, but you're not functioning in the same ranking as them or level in, as them or knowledge as them. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes think you don't always have to respond just think about it meditate on it say god what this person is talking to me about reveal it give me clarity because i don't know you know and then there's another thing like when a person is just flat out lying you know flat out heresy it's flat out misleading misguiding it contradicts what's in the bible it don't add up and all you see is miracle signs and wonders that are not from god you know so it's like there, there's different things but if a person you can listen to them and you're like oh, the spirit of the lord is there you know like they they really i i can see their fruits i I can see that they know what they're talking about let me listen let me listen let me take what i what i i I can use and leave what i don't because you're not going to learn from just one person because all of our callings are different you might learn a little bit from me and not like some of the other stuff I say and then go somewhere else and pull from them because all of our missions are different it's like going to the grocery stores you know you don't like all the carrots you just like a couple of them and some other ones a little crazy so you pick the other ones and you go and you get your peas there's a couple of them you know you go you get your oranges your whatever like you just you just pick and choose for what you're making right because all of our callings are different but as the body of Christ we are all one and we are all pushing one agenda and we are all helping to move God's kingdom forward like everybody's calling is important like it doesn't matter like what the influence is like if this person has a hundred million followers and this person just has two like it does not matter everything all of us have is worthy to God it, it's important to his kingdom and so it's our job to become educated by spending time in God's presence because when we spend time with God and we read his word now we know his voice you know what I'm saying now you're like oh no that's Satan I rebuke you in Jesus name get up out my ear you know what I'm saying like like it's different but anyway so I'm saying you know, with uh, with that, like, just kind of, just, just a little bit of everything up in there for you, okay? So then I'm going to go to um, 2 Timothy 4.2. And it says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure uh, sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myth. But you, children of God, but you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of the evangelist fulfill your ministry that's our calling all of us children of god 
to preach the word to be ready in season and out of season meaning have a real relationship with god talk to him always be in his word always okay then it's reprove rebuke exhort and with great patience and instruction right and then it says but you be sober in all things endure hardship do the work of an evangelist the work of an evangelist is just saving souls okay and it says um fulfilling your ministry meaning whatever he's called you to be to further his agenda god's agenda the god of abraham isaac and jacob's agenda this life is not about us pushing our own agenda or pushing the enemy's agenda it's all about pushing god's agenda and that's by preaching the good news right and reproving and rebuking and standing up for the truth of god the truth of god okay and then it goes you know and then it went on to say like many you know they'll get itchy ears and they'll start to not want to hear the truth but their own desires and that's just kind of what we're talking about too you know what i mean like which is why i'm also saying like have your bible read with me pay attention you know who everybody not just me but everybody that you're listening to because they're imparting something whether it's you know things of, of satan or things of god an impartation is happening in just speaking either i'm planting seeds that are going to edify the kingdom of god and us you know the children of god or i'm going to come in and i'm going to impart destruction and i'm going to pull at you and destroy you and kill your dreams and kill your hope and to steal the truth right and destroy you so that is that's the truth so then it says i have fought and this is paul i have fought the good fight i have finished the course i have kept the faith and these are what god was you know, well this is what was happening in hebrews 36 verse 36 where it says you have you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of god you may receive what uh, what was promised and so then he's saying he fought the good fight right he did the ministry stuff he endured hardship um, he you know did the work of an evangelist he has finished the course and he has kept his faith and then it says in eight it says in the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness and how do you get the crown of righteousness he's talking about in the future once he dies once he goes on to heaven so he's saying for him is the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day okay this is the day where he's like lord lord right where, where he's seen jesus face to face and then it says um will award to me on that day not only me but also to all who have loved his appearing and then matthew seven twenty two says many will say to me on that day and this is a continual of the one i just read about um not everyone who says to me lord lord um will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter many many will say to me on that day lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles and then i will declare to them i never knew you leave me you who practice lawlessness right and then it says so with all of that first of all we just went over the blueprint we went over the instructions and we went over the order for the kingdom how to get into the kingdom okay and then you see that jesus is telling them like i never knew you leave me you who practice lawlessness and he also says i never knew you and that's an important part because jesus knows whoever is spending time with him 
right like i've said in numerous videos like you get to know somebody by spending time with them and if you don't spend time with them then you never knew them and so you know just saying like to god like hey like i need you here i need you there i need your help that's not knowing that's not jesus knowing you knowing you is the intimacy knowing you is the worshiping knowing you is you put time aside knowing you is you have conversations with him and it's not all about your wants and your needs and your desires sometimes it's just laying there and all that you are and just in allowing him to be in your presence allowing him to speak to you give you dreams give you vision you know and it's setting time aside setting time aside and then i also wrote and i know there are some who will say but we aren't saved by works and i agree i agree with that but we are saved by our hearts. And I think that's something also to consider. Like, no, you can't buy your way into heaven. Doesn't matter how good or, or bad you are. But what it does matter is where does your heart stand? Are you a person after God's own heart? Are you a person who really loves God, who really cares about God, who really spends time with God? Like, does your heart yearn for him? Like, the perfect example, always, Saul and David two examples right so Saul he Samuel told him wait a couple days and I'll be back don't make the sacrifice Saul goes ahead and he makes the sacrifice anyways because he got scared and intimidated by the people so he went ahead and he lit up the sacrifice anyways but when it came or comes to I'll say came to David you know, even though he was making all of these mistakes, his heart was always after God. God said that before he even anointed him. He said to Samuel, I found a man after my own heart. Meaning, no matter how many mistakes David made, it never changed his heart. And if you spend time reading Psalms, like you will see that david had a heart for god he was always singing to god writing poetry into god talking to god in his highs and in his lows like he never strayed he wasn't like doing stuff just because somebody was trying to force him to like he literally was a man after god's own heart and so the heart, the intent of the heart matters. If you're a person and you make a mistake, but deep in your heart, you're like, God, I'm sorry, help me. I am flesh, I can't do this, this is too hard, I wanna please you, but it's hard, God, I can't overcome the world, God, I need you, and you're crying your heart out to him, and you mean it from the bottom of your heart, God will come in and help you, if you really, really want him to, he will, God is with those who have a heart of flesh, not a stony heart, but one who allows him to come in their heart and change their heart. Because we can't do this life by ourselves. We cannot, but we can do it with God. And so the heart posture means everything to God. God can work with the heart that is pure. God can work with the heart that is willing, but he cannot work with the heart that thinks that they are all they need he cannot work with a heart where the person feels they're self-made where the person feels like they done this all by themselves and they don't need nobody he cannot work with a heart that is bitter and wants to stay in bitterness but he can work with a heart that is willing to to cry out and lay their heart at his feet he can work with a willing loving heart okay and then i also wrote Paul did say, but also to all who have loved his appealing, so appearing. So meaning we love being in his presence. We love when he is with us, intimacy, because God doesn't just show himself to everybody, but those who diligently seek him. So if you're running after God and you're searching for God, you're going to find God because God is real. Like, I know some of y'all don't believe in the devil. I know some of y'all don't believe in God. I know some of y'all believe in the devil and you think he's equal to God. Mm, he's not. He is under God. Okay. He is beneath him. Beneath. 
they are not equal. God's all the way up here, and, and Satan can't even be found, okay? It's a different... Yeah, I am ashy. Oh, Jesus. I took a shower. I ain't putting a lotion on, but whatever. I'm here to reel me, right? So anyways, <laughs> so Revelations 3 and 20 I have. Beloved, I stand at the door and knock. If any, if any hears my voice and opens the door... I will come in I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. So saying, you know, there's no sin that can separate you from God. As long as you as long as you open the door, God is coming. You know, it can't no brick wall keep him, can't no ocean, none of that. None of that can keep him from getting to you. And so now Hebrew eleven six says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for the ones who comes to God must believe that he exists, and that he proves to be one who rewards those who seek him. And so the reward, right? So we're going back to the reward because that's what it was saying in Hebrews ten thirty five. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. And then it says, um, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter, right? And then it says in Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, endure hardship. It says, I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And then in 8 we have, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me that day. Will award to me. Me and God going to give him that reward, okay? And then the uh, Philippians 2, 12, 13, it says, So then, my beloved, I wonder if that's right, Philippians 2 and 12. Oh, I did. Okay, and 13. Okay. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, meaning don't be all, all God, 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 you know, by yourself, but then you get out in the presence and you act like you don't know God because there's also that scripture that says if you deny me, if you deny me here on earth, I will deny you to my Father in heaven. Okay? And so he's saying, you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. Catch this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, meaning you being delivered, right? Work that out. And what does that look like? That means changing your life to line up with God's will, with the true representation of God. That means turning away the old things, turning away the sin, saying no to the past, stepping into the new, making the transition, and sticking to the script, meaning staying in purity, staying in holiness, staying in righteousness. That means constantly rejecting what you know what is being thrown at you that is of the world that means sanctifying yourself separating yourself from the world looking different looking like what god says his children look like a holy priesthood a holy nation holy people Okay, so you have to work that out. So that's the ain't no once saved, always saved. No, that means work that out, right? And like Paul said, he says, I have finished the course. I have kept my faith. But even before that, he says, I have fought the good fight. Meaning, no matter what was coming, he continued to chase God, continued to stick with God, continue to, to do the work of an evangelist, an apostle, do the work that God gave him when God had caught him, you know, before when he was, uh, I forget exactly where, where he was coming from, um, but when God had showed up and he said, Saul, why are you prosecuting me? And then he told him, you go to this place 
and I will tell you what to do. And so God is sitting here and he's saying like, come on, there's nothing keeping you from me but you because I'm here. You draw into me, I'll draw into you. I'm here. Just come, choose me. And so, you know, Paul is sitting here and he's saying like, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And we, when we read Paul's story, you don't see him lukewarm you don't see him fidgeting you don't see him going back to his past and changing his mind and coming back you he's stuck to the course and you see that he's not over here saying god da, 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 i don't i don't want to deal with you i'm not going to deal with you i'm not going to even when he was in prison with silas they were praising god he said he stuck the course, even though, even though he had his trials, he had his tribulations, he has his, his moments, you know, but he stuck it out. He stuck it out till the very end. He kept choosing God. And so then it says in 13, for it is God who is at work in you, the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who is going to help you finish the course, you guys. And then it says, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. And that goes back to that other scripture where it says, you know, Jesus is going, is, um, what is it? It says that Jesus is true to complete the work, right? Or, y'all, yeah, here I go again. I can like my first video where, you know, he is faithful to complete the work until the coming of Jesus Christ. So there we go. And so, you know, Jesus is faithful to complete it. So whatever God has set out, God is faithful to complete it. God is a faithful God. And so that is the truth, okay, on how we going to get into heaven, you guys. is sticking to the script choosing god over and over again yes we have days we're tired yes we have days we're frustrated yes we have days where we don't want nothing to do with nothing we have those days but it's sticking to the course that'll get us the crown of righteousness it's completing the will of god that'll get us there living in the spirit you know living in the spirit is moving the kingdom of god not the lukewarmness y'all but the dedication the sacrifice being a living sacrifice and you guys want to know what i are what i actually read right before i started all this with you guys that was pointed out to me so this is also hebrews 10 and we're starting at five and it says therefore when he comes into the world he says sacrifice and offering you have not desired but a body you have prepared for me and whole burnt offering and sacrifices for sin you have taken no pleasure then i said behold i have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me to do your will O god to do your will O god y'all this is powerful hmm, now i'm landing on 10 verses 38 it says but my righteous one shall live by faith and if he shrinks back my soul has no pleasure in him you guys fight the good fight for god fight the good fight because he gonna back you up get in the will i promise the will is way better than you could have ever imagined it's way better than the promises satan gave or gives it's more better than luke 4 it is way better and as i said then as soon as jesus declined satan right he went right out into the fame of what did it say the synagogue i forget I could look it up though actually let's go to Luke 4 because you know what I'm like girl you you should be quoting stuff better what is going on 
You guys don't even know how many times I recorded this video and it didn't want to it didn't want to record it didn't want to record so i had to go get into prayer do a whole spiritual warfare i've done recorded this about three four times and it, it didn't want to upload so bear with me you guys it is 1 10 in the morning okay so let's see and reported to the surrounding locally so let's see, Jesus is tempted, and Elisha, okay, to proclaim, okay, and then it says, and Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, so let's go, we'll start at 412, and Jesus answered and said to him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test, when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until the opportune time. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the surrounding districts. And he began teaching in the synagogue and was praised by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as uh, was he custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Okay, and that's another one. But anyways, it says, and was praised by all. And so we know Jesus' um, ministry was three years and three years long and we know he accomplished way more we all know about him till this day still speaking about him till this day and imagine what he would have had had he traded us in but we have a faithful god a strong god one who cannot be deceived one who, who is superior one who is holy one who is uh, magnificent perfect excellent wonderful fabulous okay gracious kind merciful full of goodness full of love full of kindness one who sits high and looks down low i mean one who speaks a word and things start manifesting i mean come on now come on now we serve a wonderful god all right you guys it's late i'm gonna try to upload this so let's close this out in prayer Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've given to us today. Thank you for being in the midst, Father, and for just shedding light on things that we may or may have not known or things we may or may not have forgotten, Father. I just thank you for your truth, your revelation, and your boldness, especially in a time like this where the world is just God. I'm trying to tell the people we are living in the days of Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2. But anyways, God, I just thank you. I love you. We appreciate you. We ask that this this food, Father God, that we meditate on it, that we chew it up, Father God, that it becomes us, that we know what we're talking about when we're speaking. We know what we're doing. We know, Father God, what we're receiving, Father. I just pray that you open our eyes and take the scales off of them. Open our ears to hear you clearly and open our hearts to always receive what you have. Father God, I just pray that you continue to lead and guide us in the right direction and cover us all by the blood. Father, I just pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, Father God, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And do what you do how you need it to be done. And use us, your children, who are just waiting eagerly, Father God, for you to just tell us what to do so we can do it. And be you know obedient to you be be faithful and hold you down like you've been holding us down father we thank you and we love you and we appreciate you we ask that your will be done in each and every one of our lives and um through this video in jesus name we pray amen 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 all right y'all i'm out of here i gotta go i'll see y'all later catch y'all at the next video bye